Welcome, everybody, to the Fandom Zone. It is I, General Zod, here in the lower bowels of the Phantom Zone for another review. This review today is going to be on Ford versus Ferrari. And this movie uh, is an interesting film because it did piss me off at the end of the film, but not because it was bad, just because of a certain thing it highlights that's still an issue today. So first I'm going to start with my pros, my cons, and... Of course, give you my rating system. I now have two ratings. Zod approves or Zod does not. In a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being the worst pile of trash that your Earth has produced. Or 10 being the greatest thing that Zod has ever seen. So let's get right down to it. Ford versus Ferrari is the story of two Friends, Carol Shelby played by Matt Damon and Christian Bell playing uh, Matt uh, Selvin, I believe the name was. He is a famous race car driver. Now, this takes place in the backdrop after World War II when Ford uh, was out of the tank making business and the economy started taking a shift. And they had to compete with Ferrari, which is interesting because Ferrari was going bankrupt and Ford wanted to buy them out. But they refused because there is a race called the Le Mans race, which is a 24-hour race uh, with uh, race cars, kind of like a Daytona, but a world thing where drivers drive for 24 hours straight on a track. It is the most grueling race to this day and the most dangerous race. And it starts out with Ford wanting to buy Ferrari. And then when Henry Ford is uh, insulted, uh, Henry Ford II, which I'm not spoiling anything. It's seen in the previews. He decides he is going to build the best Ford racing car the world has ever seen. And this is uh, interesting. So let me get to my cons. My cons are pretty much nothing really except for the length of this film. This film is a two hour and 25 minute film. It's almost two and a half hours. Once again, Hollywood stop making really long films. Not to say this isn't engaging, but there is a point where I was able to go refill my drink, get the girl some candy, things like that. So the pacing was slightly off in this film, and that's me nitpicking. Now, let me get to my pros, because my pros outweigh my cons in this one. First off, the chemistry between Matt Damon and Christian Bale is what you would expect it to be. Four stars. These two... Hold up this movie. It is a Joker situation. You have a lot of other good cast members. Uh, John Berthal, who if you don't know is from The Punisher or um, The Walking Dead. Once again, he is phenomenal in his supporting role. But Matt Damon and Christian Bale are the highlight of this film. They single-handedly carry this story. And another good supporting cast member is Christian Bale's wife. I don't know her name, but when you see her, you know who I'm talking about. And she is phenomenal. She is a great foil to Christian Bale. And there's one scene in particular where she steals the scene. And once again, when you see the film, you'll know what I'm talking about. Also, this thing is very well shot. Um, the racing scenes are phenomenal. Uh, the scenery is beautiful. The old school feel, that, uh, 50s feel is in it. They show the first Mustang being rolled out by Ford. It's definitely a great period piece. Also, the last portion of the movie, the 24-hour race scene is astonishing. Uh, it is just great. I don't want to spoil it, but it, it's really uh, a testament and gave me a newfound respect for racing. Uh, just everything 
anytime Christian Bale and Matt Damon are on screen, it is like movie magic. It's gold. They just simply deliver every single line and they engage you with their conversation. And they play a good yin and yang. I brought that these guys were not only friends in this movie, but even friends outside of this movie because the chemistry is so great. It's so strong that you buy this friendship of these two guys who served together in the war and came out and are trying to find their way back into the world. Some stuff ha happened to Shelby, and it almost is like he lives through Christian Bale due to something that happens to him in the film, and you feel it. By the end of this film, there is not a dry eye in the theater. It is an amazingly told tale. Um, this is on the level of acting that Joker hit with the way lines are delivered, with the way things are shot, with the way the camera work is done. The cinematography is outstanding in this film. No shots are wasted. You see all of the action, especially they do this thing when these cars are moving at like 230 miles an hour. It's almost like they slow it down so you could see the intense racing between two cars as they pull and jock for position and you're sitting there in the car and if you're you're at the theater you're almost like steering trying so hard to like be in the action this film engrosses you so overall this is another great film delivered by hollywood it deserves every bit of accolade that it gets and honestly if there is one contender for joker it is going to be Christian Bale or Matt Damon. I honestly don't know who's supposed to be the lead in this film because they both could be leads. Um, even in the title screen, um, their names are one and two. So I, I don't know who is the lead actor and who is the supporting actor. But I do know that it is going to be a very tough run against Joker. This film is brilliant. It's great. It's heartfelt. It's emotionally delivered. It's well acted. It's Matt Damon at his best, which I have not seen in a couple of years. And Christian Bale, as always, never delivering a poor movie. He gives us another great performance, showing you why these two are at the top of their class, and they just get better as they age. So, what do I think? Zod approves. Zod highly approves. If you haven't seen this movie, what are you doing? Don't go see Frozen 2. You're going to be dragged there by kids if you have a family. Go see Ford vs. Ferrari. This thing is another cinematic masterpiece. And, as always, if I had to scale this from 1 to 10, it was tough. I've been bouncing around in my head with different ratings, but I would give this a solid 9. Um, sheerly on the fact, I wouldn't give it a 9.5 or a 10 because there were parts that were a little slowed down. Uh, narrative stuff, it doesn't necessarily take away from the movie. I just felt it was too long for the kind of movie that it was. That's not to say it was bad or they were doing filler they just could have trimmed it down a little bit and maybe let the race take more precedence. Also, if you are a racing fan and you think this is all uh, NASCAR racing and you're going to see a bunch of them, it's not. It's Christian Bale and Matt Damon's character versus the company Ford and what they had to do and what they were battling to get their dream car made. So it's very strong, mostly on the dialogue and the acting between these characters. But everyone delivers. I loved it. Go and see it. So thank you guys for tuning into the channel. This has been another great review. My next review that I will bring you will be on um, more than likely Frozen 2. Letting you guys know whether or not it is worth suffering through with the kids. Anyways, also, Zod's picks will be coming soon, and my first pick is going to be Justified, so stay tuned to the channel. 
for that. And as always, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget the one rule here in the fandom zone. Kneel before your generals. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button. And if you like the content, hit the subscribe button. Welcome to the fandom zone.